representing the government of Canada, we had anticipated having the Honourable Ronna Ambrose with us, but she was called away by a last minute family matter. We are very busy with our families and our work and our jobs. Minister Ambrose was one of the first people to uh, support this event very enthusiastically. We wish we could have had her here, but in her place, we do have the Honourable Lori Hahn, Member of Parliament for Edmonton Centre, who's going to bring some greetings on behalf of the federal government. Your turn for a hug. <laughs> we all remember Lois Hole's hugs, right? You bet. Well, we've all got stories about Lois Hole, and I'd, I'd love to tell one. We don't have time, but thank you, Portia, and thank you for the hug. You can never get too many of those. Elders, Premier Redford, Sarah, Mr. Klimchuk, MLAs, councillors, representatives of the RCMP, the Police Service. It is a, a great morning to be here. It's a, it's a beautiful, almost fall day. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not Ronna Ambrose, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. But I am really pleased to be here and bring greetings on behalf of Minister Ambrose, who was called away, uh, and the Government of Canada, and of course, Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper. I want to thank the organizers, as been said, but these events obviously don't happen without an awful lot of work. So I want to thank the organizers, community members, who made today's Daughters' Day celebration possible particularly the support of the Indo-Canadian Women's Association and Citizens for a Civil Society. I have to say that I can't agree more with the following statement which the Daughters' Day Organizing Committee issued last year. And that says that we condemn injustices against women, every one of whom is someone's daughter. We seek a better life for them and for everyone, beginning in our own community. Clearly the Government of Canada and Daughters' Day organizers share common goals, as do we all. Our government is working hard to try to promote equality for women and girls and to eliminate violence and human rights abuses against them and against everyone. And we too believe that working from the grassroots level, as is happening here today, uh, and on up, can create lasting and positive change, not only for women and girls, but for everyone. I'm especially delighted to join you in celebrating daughters. My own daughter Jennifer is in Vancouver, so obviously she can't be here today. My wife, of course, is somebody else's daughter. Uh, and I have a new daughter-in-law, Kieran, as of about a month ago, uh, who is from the East Indian community. So I'm very, very proud of, of all those women uh, in my life. While we celebrate the daughters in our lives, women and girls who have been family, keystones and beacons of guidance and care, let us recognize that there are many remarkable women in this country, and, and Heather alluded to some of them, who along with raising families are also juggling careers, community service. I salute daughters everywhere. And I'm particularly proud, as I said, of my own daughter, Jennifer, and I salute parents who raised them because strong families mean a strong Canada. And I think, and I say this often in public, I think that's one thing we've lost in Canada is the ability to look after each other, whether it's our own family or our extended family of our communities. And I think that's something we need to get back. And things like Daughter's Day do go a long way to making that a reality. There's other events coming up. October is Women's History Month in Canada. The theme this year is Strong Girls, a Strong Canada, Leaders from the Start. October 11th will celebrate the first ever International Day of the Girl. Our Women's History Month theme really sets the stage for this inaugural commemoration by recognizing girls as leaders and showcasing their contributions. From girl guides to hockey players, from entrepreneurs to community organizers, girls have played an important role in shaping our country's history. Throughout it all, they have faced challenges and seized opportunities, making a difference in countless ways, large and small. And I can tell you, having spent time in in Afghanistan over the past few years, several visits, I can tell you that the women there are the ones who are ultimately going to make the difference. Whatever difference is being made today is largely being made because of the women of Afghanistan. They've got the toughest job, but they're also the ones who are leading the way. As you know, throughout the world, girls face higher rates of violence, poverty, and discrimination. In Canada, girls experience higher rates of depression, sexual harassment, and dating violence. Improving girls' lives has a ripple effect on all of us. What is good for girls and women is good for all of us. So the upcoming annual International Day of the Girl will promote equal treatment, equal opportunities for girls around the world in areas such as law, nutrition, health care, education, training, and freedom from violence and abuse. Here in Canada, we want the very best for our daughters. To make that happen, we must explore how healthy relationships, good role models, and a positive self-image can empower girls. Both Daughters' Day and the International Day of the Girl will make a real difference in the lives of girls and young women as citizens and as powerful voices of change in our families, our communities, and our entire country. To each and every one of you, please accept my sincere congratulations on this first of what will be many days 
uh, and enjoy the rest of Daughter's Day and enjoy your daughters and your wives and your mothers and all the women in your lives every day. Thank you very much.